Welcome everyone to week eight. I chose this image because can you believe it? It's already halfway through the semester and you're almost there. And for some of you, you're about ready to graduate. So keep it up and I wish everyone all the best. So let's go ahead and jump into module eight. We're going to start with the assignment summary. Of course, you should be watching the video, which currently you are. Then the module review will be that you're going to read chapter six and review the PowerPoint presentation for chapter six. The assignments will be the course participation top 10 topics, which I'll touch on here in a minute. The chapter six learn smart assignment, the case study, which will be on Sirius satellite radio, the global simulation mid game period valuations, something new, the global simulation year 10 report, which you should be familiar with. And also the global simulation decisions for year 10. Last but not least is the chapter six quiz. Let me go ahead and scroll down. We're going to start with the course participation top 10 topics. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to pick as a team your top 10 topics that you felt was most important throughout the semester so far. It could be from your textbook, Globus, discussion boards, case studies, or reports, or conversations you have had with your team, team member. It's all up to you, okay? Now, it's just not going to be a PowerPoint presentation. You have to include audio and or video. Last semester, most students just did audio. There wasn't too many that did video. Um, it would be nice video, but if you just do audio, that's fine. If you would say, well, what do you mean by audio? Well, very similar to what I'm doing right now. You see something on the screen, and I'm telling you what the, that topic is uh, pertaining to that's on the screen. Now, I'm using Camtasia, and I realize most of you don't have access to Camtasia. So you can actually use the built-in feature in PowerPoint, if you want to use PowerPoint, to record your audio. So let me just show you a quick glance of the option for recording within PowerPoint. Okay, so within PowerPoint, you should see the recording tab. If you don't, you may have to, you may have to add it to the menu, um, but most likely by default, it's already there for you. So you can actually record audio per slide. If you will say, well, how's that going to work out with the team? What I would suggest if you use PowerPoint, you don't have to. There's many different other ones you can choose from. Is say I, as a team member, start the PowerPoint presentation. I did a few slides. I recorded mine. Then you can email it or share it through a OneDrive or any kind of cloud storage. So the other team members can go ahead and open it up and add their slides and their audio to the slides. So that's how you can uh, accomplish the assignment. Um, like I said, you don't have to use PowerPoint. But most likely, that's what majority of you are used to, though. It would make the assignment probably easier to you, though. I did this last semester, and it went over very well because most people had experience with PowerPoint. They never recorded audio within PowerPoint. This is going to give them another chance to learn another skill set. Okay, so once the team is finished, they have to upload the presentation by March 2nd. And then by March 3rd, everybody, I mean individually, has to review at least two presentations uh, uploaded by teams and make a comment. So the initial portion of this assignment is team driven. And then the second part is individual. Uh, so make sure each individual access at least two presentations and make a comment. Of course, next we have the Learn Smart for chapter six and the quiz and the case study, which is Sirius XM which you should be familiar with the format of that. So I'm going to keep on moving down. Next, we have the global simulation mid game peer evaluations. Okay. You will be evaluating yourself and your team members on 12 different factors, and you will have an opportunity to include any additional written comments if you choose to. Okay. The contents of the peer and self evaluations will be provided to the instructor, but will not be reported to the, your co-managers. So feel free to be honest. I will not be sharing it. Um, in an ideal situation, I would share them. Uh, but the fear is if I do, it may really damage a, a certain team. So that, that's why I found that last semester not sharing them. And, and that information really only be for, for me. Uh, the instructor, not for the students, um, is better off. If you would say, well, why even provide that information then? Then I could tell who's doing all the work is evenly distributed 
um, is one team member doing a lot more than another team member. So then when it comes to grading, I, I know really what to start looking out for. So please be honest. Um, with that said, you know, after the fact, if, if you find yourself um, putting some negative comments about a team member, make sure you give them an opportunity um, to kind of address them. If you never bring it up to them, they may or may not know. So, um, but with that said, they won't know because you put it on the peer evaluation because they won't see it. All right, the year 10 report. Everyone should know by now all about the report, so I'm not going to go in depth. Um, most teams, you're already meeting expectations, exceeding expectations when it comes to yearly reports. The only pushback that I keep on putting in most of the comments is change the formatting. I realize if this was a true annual report, the format most likely would be the same. But as you know, this is not a true annual report. An annual report wouldn't change the questions every single year. Okay, right now you see there's seven questions. These are not the same seven questions you answered for last year. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is not a true annual report. You will complete one of those during year 15. Okay. So um, the whole purpose of making you change the formatting is to gain experience with uh, different styles. Uh, you may work for a company and they may have the formatting, but you may be able to improve it. But if I don't ever have you change the formatting or the style, then whatever they give you, you're just taking a run with it. So, But that's the concept. Of, if you're struggling with exactly what I'm looking for, uh, Reach out to me. I, I provided a few examples to some other teams, so um, I, I'm, I'm open to that because I never want the assignment to be frustrating. Um, I just want you to be able to focus on it. Last but not least is the year 10 decisions. Of course, by now, everyone's got this under control. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into Globus and review year 9. Okay, before we review the results for year 9, I just want to share something with you. Um, this slide I'm going to be calling By the Numbers. So obviously, you know, there's 11 teams competing within our class, but there's actually a lot more people than just us using the software. Currently, there are over 150 colleges, which means there's over 3,000 teams. And with that said, we have one team that has ranked within the top 100 in one of the categories. So the category is the overall game to date score. They have 107 which is tied for 68th place overall game-to-date score performance of the week uh, worldwide for last week, of course. So keep in mind, we're competing against 150 schools, over 3,000 teams, and we have a team that has tied within 68th place. So fantastic. Keep that up. Last semester, I had a bunch of teams make it within the top 100. So I hope more of our teams get in there. And that team is Team E. So... Congratulations. I just really want to point this out. Um, I'm hoping I'll get to do more by the number slides uh, in the coming weeks and to showcase um, not only our class but our college. So great job. So let's go ahead and dive right into the year nine results. Okay, so leading the charge we have Team H. They went up plus five. They're at 105 for year nine. Great job. Uh, Team E, who we just spoke about, they're at now 103 for uh, year nine. Uh, they actually dropped four. So then you have Team D. They're at 101. And then so on and so forth. Obviously, you guys can read the list here. If I had to kind of draw two lines here, kind of what I would say the division lines, is I would draw it between Team C and F. And then I would also draw another line between, I would say, B and K. The reason why is the, the the first one is C and F is I would say the, the the division line is about ninety. So if you have ninety or above, you're in the hunt. Anything below that, you really need to get going. The reason why I would draw that other line, you know, right above K, as you can see, they're at seventy two and they drop six, and Team I is at sixty five and they drop nineteen. So what I would say is Team I. If you don't pick up the pace, we're going to have to have a team meeting to see what's going on. Same way with Team K. You have to become competitive within this um, competition. So let's go ahead and jump down to the game-to-date scoreboard. 
So this is overall. We have team H and E. They're tied at 108. Keep it up. Team D, you got 105. Team A, you got 98. F's at 94, so on and so forth. Then again, if I had to draw a line of concern, it would be between B and G. Now, G, you're at 84, and, and you still can move up, but you're still within that area of concern. Team I at 75, and Team K at 73. T to me, this come up here, you have to pick up the pace. If you don't, if you drop again, you're, you pretty much will be out of it. So keep that in mind. Continue to analyze the reports that you have access to. There's really no reason not to at least be somewhat competitive, to be in, you know, in the low 80s, mid 80s. So keep that in mind. So now I'm going to jump to earnings per share. As you see, most of you are meeting expectations. Um, not really any big concern here. Some went up a little bit, some went down a little bit. That's going to happen throughout the year. So let's go ahead and just move on to return on equity. So then again, majority of our meet expectations. There's been a few drops here and there. Uh, the largest one would be Team I, of course. They went from 28 to 21. So I would say that's a concern for them. But everyone else, that's within reason. You're going to go up and down. Next, we have stock price. Majority of teams are meeting expectations, so keep it up. Most of you, even if you're not meeting expectations, you did go up. Except, again, Team I, you went from 73 all the way down to 46. So we, we can't have that. You have to go up at least uh, for year 10. You can no longer take any more dips to stay competitive. Next, we have credit rating. Now, as you know from previous videos, I kept on saying before we know it, everyone's going to be at least A minus A or A plus. But we did have a team drop to B plus. Still, B plus to me is not a big concern. I'm going to guess by year 10 they're going to go to at least a minus but team c keep an eye on that though you don't want to dip too low so let's go ahead and look at envy trading envy trading for the most part again everyone's meeting expectations even if there was a dip it wasn't really much of a dip so uh, the only minor concern would be team i and they went they dropped four points but still that, that's not that bad they could make that up so Okay, so that's where I'm going to stop with analyzing data. Obviously, you know how to look at the other reports. Please reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. Um, I'm not going to give away strategy, but I can at least try to point you in the right direction without just trying to give away answers or tell you what another company is doing, especially when you can figure it out yourself if you actually read the reports. So, as always, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a great week.